On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have a rundown of the fishing reports from the holiday weekend, a preview of the big September glossy issue and the digital issue. Our correspondents check in from around the island and we have more video clips from the Seafood Festival all here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. I hope you all had a chance to enjoy the holiday weekend and wet a line. Just a reminder that the big glossy September issue is out now on newsstands and in the hands of subscribers. Tony Salerno has an article on fishing for puffers and kingfish in Mauritius Bay. Then Brendan Cecile has a great read on top order lures for trophies. Evan Caramon has an informative feature on what you need to know about the versatility of using metal jigs. New England editor Dave Anderson gives us his perspective on the best plastics used in the surf. All this and more in the September Glossy Magazine. And in this week's digital edition, Dave Anderson highlights the daughter. Captain Jim Frieda writes about nearshore yellowfin bites. And Jack Lazarda lets the cat out of the bag on the deadly savage eel. All this and more in the digital edition. All this is a good reason to be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine. You're automatically entered into our Dreamboat Contest and your chance to win a center console from Steigercraft powered by Yamaha. 30 bucks gets you 12 glossy print issues and all the digital issues sent to your inbox. It is one of the best deals going out there right now. Just one fish hit the board this week, but it was significant. Norman Bouchard of Marston Mills, Mass, sent a sea bass in via snail mail that will net him at the very least the monthly prize for August. Norm's 4.15 pounder is the only sea bass entered so far in the 2023 and it couldn't have come at a better time. For his efforts, he will win the Tsunami Shield reel coupled with a Tsunami Armatech rod and a Dextream fillet knife from Dexter Outdoors. Our top three remain unchanged. Bobby Cifarelli still holds first place with 24 points. Eddie Terabiel remains in second place with 18 points, and Kyle Krause maintains his third place position with 16 points. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman's subscriber-only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21-foot Steigercraft center console powered by a Yamaha along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. Now let's get to the upcoming events. This Saturday, September 9th, is the Captree Dockside Family Festival. Then on Sunday, September 10th, the town of Oyster Bay has their Waterfront Festival at Tobe Beach Marina. Next Saturday, the 16th, is the Women's Fishing Expo. We'll, that will be held at Connect Bud River State Park Preserve. Just a heads up, put Thursday, September 21st in your calendar. The Fisherman is holding their 2023 fishing show and seminar at the Long Island Hilton in Melville. We will have a great lineup of speakers, including Crazy Alberto, John Padawan of the Snapjing Expert, Bill Wetzel talking surf, Jenny Ackerman, fluke expert, and yours truly at the Surfcasters Roundtable. For all the details, visit thefisherman.com slash events. And keep in mind that September 29th through October 1st is the Fred Galifaro Memorial Montour Classic this year. Marine Maid of Lindenhurst and Starbride are giving away up to $1,000 in free fuel. All you need to do is purchase any Starbride product. Every item you purchase gets you into the weekly drawing. Last chance to win is September 30th, so visit Marine Maid in Lindenhurst now for your chance to win. <music> Let's first take a look at some notable catches from around the island last week. Steven Berg sent this keeper fluke shot in last week saying, reading the doc fluke article in September paid off, got this one in Mauritius. Nico Cristano also let us know that the Bonito action has started in the eastern Long Island area with this Labor Day catch. Hey, remember those sheep said we've been talking about? Mike Carbone also reported this 11 pounder from the south shore of the island last week. 
Fisher Magazine has launched their apparel store. We have hats, sweatshirts, hoodies, t-shirts, all on one now. And free shipping with orders over 100 bucks. It is the perfect gift for yourself or that angler that you know in your life. Visit thefisherman.com slash shop or click on the card in the upper right. Now let's head over to the map for my report. Starting in the East End, Labor Day weekend fishing did not disappoint for those who were able to sneak out between the holiday festivities. Fluking from the shallows of Shinnecock Bay out to the deeper ground south of Montauk Point produced great action again this week. I didn't get any word of any monsters hitting the scales, but all around nice fish up to about seven, eight pounds or so. Those bigger fish should come out to play later this month before they leave for the year. The only striper fishing going on right now are the larger fish near Block Island. Sea bassing was solid again during the week with some impressive ones up to four pounds being caught east of the point, close to the block. Porgies once again were outstanding around the point and south of the point to about three pounds. No word on those albies yet, but I have a feeling they'll be arriving any day now in Montauk. Along the south shore in Mauritius Bay, the blowfish are big and they're getting hungry. Basically any hole in the bay is loaded with these little critters and they're stealing every fluke bait put down just about. Stripers have also shown in the bay near the cuts in the inlet. Trigger fish can be had off the rock piles or inlet area rocks as well as by the buoy chains. Also, Mauritius weak fish making is showing in a narrows area, chasing around those peanut bunker, throw casting out there, get some peanut bunker, good way to score with some weak fish. You can't uh, grab the peanuts, snappers will make a great weak fish bait too. Remember the legal limit is only three snappers per person, keep that in mind. Over in the Great South Bay, weak fish continue to pop up on the north side of the bay and near the ocean beach, near ocean beach to the inlet. Fluking is good as well in that area, but there are a ton of shorts in the mix. I myself was able to sneak out a few evenings during the week, had a couple of keepers and a couple small weak fish around the Fire Island area. And on the offshore grounds, Yellowfin are at the Picardy and Bluefin and are also near the 30 Fathom Curve. And back inshore at the dock, Snappers, Crabs and Spot are all over the place from Mauritius to Bayshore. West of that definitely was a fair week of fluke fishing due to the moon, tides and winds from what I heard. In many areas, the fluke bike bite did get pretty tough but the porgies and sea bass were somewhat cooperative but they also were not as good as the previous week the tuna fishing has been in the canyons and there have been some bluefin right outside of jones inlet along the north shore it was another crazy week of blue fishing with much of the sound producing choppers over 10 pounds colder temperatures gave the striped bass a shot in the arm especially along the central north shore out by the middle grounds Western Sound continues to see some excellent fluke fishing and red hot fishing for bluefish. Keep those bluefish in mind. Porgies continue to pave the way on the rocky layers from the beaches out to about 60 feet anywhere in the sound. Sea bass also continue to provide plenty of action, although you do have to cull through a good amount of shores to put a fish or two in the box. Except on the east end of the sound where there's a, some better ratios out that way. Um, some of the party and charter boats out there have been able to get their full boat limits. Most of the bays and harbors as well, we're seeing a good mix of small stripers, cocktail blues, porgies, and even a few keeper fluke. The piers and docks inside those harbors are producing good sized snappers, particularly for anglers hitting their favorite ones uh, in the early mornings with cast masters and small snapper poppers. Rich Von Owen reports still some okay fluking in blues in the bay from Point Lookout to Long Beach. Plenty of small sea bass are around. Lots of peanut bunker and spearing are all throughout the Reynolds Channel. Rich, how's that weather looking? Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's check that weekend forecast and see what we got going on. You can always uh, check your favorite apps, weather tools, weather sites, whatever you got. This is a general heads up, general overview on the upcoming weekend. And it uh, looks like it's going to be a cloudy weekend, a little showery, but I think that it'll be fishable. Water temps came up during the week. Uh, we had all that heat and humidity, so some 70s now, mid-70s showing up, so bouncing back up again. I don't see a lot of big waves or rough ocean here, maybe a soft swell as we go throughout the weekend, but I think a general one to two, two to three should do it for most of the weekend. But uh, you can see on the uh, the GFS outlook here, a lot of green on there. We have a stalled weather front, just a slow-moving one across the area, both Saturday Sunday. The winds will be south probably 5 to 15. It's going to blow Friday night, so I think Saturday could be a little lumpy to start, and then it kind of settles in the afternoon. Sunday looks, again, okay, south-southeast, about 5 to 15. 
And then we'll, uh, you know, we'll see the clouds and some showers. So just bring a rain jacket for the weekend. It's not going to be a washout weekend, not pouring, but you can see on our maps here again, Saturday, we do got some green on there, but not a ton of rain. And the same thing on Sunday. Again, it's not going to be too windy, but no cloudy showery. That's kind of what it looks like right now. Not as hot either. We got some uh, lower to mid eighties for Saturday humidity and maybe a little cooler, touch cooler on Sunday, 70s to near 80. We'll check the Guru quickly. Uh, you know, not showing a ton of wind here. Light west to maybe south-southwest coming up for Sunday afternoon, going southeast late in the day. Uh, again, general 1 to 2, 2 to 3 in the ocean. Sound should be okay. Peconic Bay should be good. I mean, basically just kind of a cloudy, showery weekend, but I think it looks fishable. Should be okay. Be safe as always. Catch them up. Have a great weekend. Matt, back to you. Now let's check in with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Tim. Thanks, Matt. Well, greetings, everybody from Montauk. Pretty much a spectacular weekend and early week out here. Um, pretty much everywhere on the island, even though it's been hot, it's been absolutely no wind, and it's been a great opportunity to get out and do some fishing, especially over the holiday weekend. Uh, the big news is tuna fishing is pretty much red hot out here. Um, plenty of tuna fish close into shore. A uh, mixed bag of bluefin and yellowfin. I had a great opportunity to get out on Monday and uh, nailed a couple, so that was a good thing. Um, the offshore, far offshore report, not a whole lot going on. It seems to have slowed down out there, although uh, the Viking 5 Star and the Viking Star are still out. They're not back yet, so I'll have a better report for next week. Uh, striped bass fishing is still doing very well. Most of the fishing is being done off of Block Island, but there's some still nice striped bass being caught locally. Um, false albacore haven't really shown up yet. Um, I've seen some pictures of some around Block, so it should be any day now. Um, going back, starting up uh, tomorrow, which is today, with this video. So hopefully I'll have better uh, false albacore news. Sea bass fluke, it's picking up some nicer sized fish. Usually this time of year, they start getting bigger quality fish right on the beach. And the guys have been picking away on some nice fluke on the beach. Again, as I mentioned last week, my Castoberfest coming up October 8th, Sunday, Columbus weekend. Same weekend as the Fall Festival in Montauk, so it's a good weekend to be here. Come out, get a free raffle ticket, free beer from Montauk Brewing. And we're set up on Montauk Lake Club on the lawn. So it's a great opportunity to learn how to cast a fly rod if you've ever had any interest in doing so and some great raffle prizes to potentially win. All right, everybody, the weekend is looking good. The weather's looking good. Um, get out before this next hurricane comes up and puts the swell on, and we will talk to you soon, Matt. Thank you. From Sag Harbor, we have Will and Andy. Thanks, Matt. Report this week out of Sag Harbor. Inshore bite, we have black sea bass going pretty strong. Fluking has been nice towards the east out of Montauk and off of Block. Um, obviously kind of bottom fish like Porgies, people are catching blowfish, snappers, that type of stuff, like inshore around Sag Harbor, the Peconic. Uh, stripers, honestly, at this point, everyone's kind of just waiting for the fall run. Uh, but we have blackfish seasoning open uh, soon, so that'll be exciting. And hopefully, uh, everyone had a nice end to summer and, and looking forward to the fall. Yeah, as Will said, hope you guys had a great summer. So, um, you know, inshore, as Will said, it's been pretty decent. Um, offshore has been very good, kind of mixed at certain points, but offshore has been pretty solid. Inshore, we're hoping with the fall, the fish come a little closer. Hopefully get those nice dragger bites with those good size yellowfin coming closer in so we can get after them in the blackfin. Um, so thanks, Matt. Back to you. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Um, you know, still kind of having that, that, you know, summer doldrum type of fishing we've been talking about. Was hoping that as we, you know, got past that, uh, the supermoon, uh, you know, and, and through the hurricane swell, maybe things would change a little bit, but um, kind of like the same pattern, you know, decent, decent fluke fishing in the bay. And not a, a lot of people didn't get out into the ocean because of the swell and the inlets being pretty lumpy. Um, but, you know, there a lot of shorts to keep a ratio there. Um, sea bass, again, you know, same type of thing. People not really being able to get out. And when they did, it does seem that that swell kind of killed the bite. Same thing also offshore, whether it was the swell, whether the fish um, had left. But just kind of, uh, you know, a couple of random reports of bluefin and yellowfin for people that did go out. And flat, calm, glassy conditions, bit of a swell um, further out in some of those midshore. And uh, some people went out a little bit further. Yet there was a ton of mahi around, so pretty good consolation prize there. Still a lot of cocktail blues um, in the surf 
and in the inlets and some bigger blues in the inlets. We went out front uh, Sunday morning, um, worked some of the bunker pods for a little bit, didn't really see anything going on, took the bunker back into Mariches, and it was all blues. But, you know, some nice size, 12 to 15 pounders. So in terms of striped bass, a couple of them back in the bays, there's an incredible amount of small bait around. Um, I haven't had any any luck so far, uh, you know, in the past week since we last spoke, but um, did see a couple of fish caught, um, you know, like closer to the mouths of the inlets, but kind of all over the bay there's just bait, so there's small schoolie bass, nothing really of any significant size. So, um, you know, we'll see as we come up on the, uh, the next new moon and hopefully temperatures drop a little bit that we start to see some of these um, you know, the migration, you know, kick into gear and, and pass through our neighborhood. Also waiting on those albies, heard a couple of random reports, but uh, I think that was pretty much, you know, more out like Montauk area. Um, haven't heard any like solid reports in Shinnecock or Mariches. So keep an eye out for them. Could be this weekend. You never know. All right, get out there, catch them up this weekend. I'll talk to you next week. Back to you, Matt. From Northport, we have the Cal Harbor Bait and Tackle Report. Hey folks, it's so great to be back by popular demand. Again, a lot of requests and calls at the shop. Where have you been for two weeks? You know, it's so busy and everything like that. I do apologize, but I have to tell you, the fishing is unbelievable. Labor Day weekend, wow, what a turnout. This has been such a memorable summer. I hope it was as much fun for you as it was for me creating so many memories, seeing so many kids coming in with their parents and friends, people coming together. The fishing is absolutely incredible. I have nothing bad to say. I mean, I never have anything bad to say, but I have to tell you something. Bluefish, striped bass, there's even cobia in Huntington Bay. Uh, yeah, cobia. We have a huge Spanish mackerel bite going on. There's a gigantic uh, shrimp uh, har uh, hatch. It's bunker, the little bunker everywhere. The adult bunker, we've really got to look into that. I've heard rumors that um, our governor has let bunker boats into the sound. That's where they've gone. I know they're on the South Shore. They're really doing a lot of damage to our bunker, which is a main stock and a big reason, huge reason why Long Island Sound is so clean and why we have so many species. We had huge pods of dolphins showing up. It's just been nonstop action. Loads of fish species. I've watched our area and the entire sound develop more and more each season, and it's just nothing but wonderful stuff. Um, you got to get out there and do memories. Remember, kids are back to school, so it's going to change up a little bit. But we've got fantastic boats for hire. We've got great party boats, uh, charter boats. Get out there, jump on one. Don't be afraid to call the shop, ask for recommendations. We know who to go out on, and uh, we'll steer you in the right direction. Love all these questions. And here's just a little shout out on some of these social media things, uh, pages. I've uh, observed that I don't really get involved. But there's a lot of criticism going on. And I think that's why so many people like to come to the shop because when you come in and you ask your questions, I hear a lot of things like, hey, I've got a stupid question. There's nothing stupid about questions. Questions create knowledge. And knowledge is what we all need to make a better society, better friends, better family, better relationships. So next time someone asks a question, if you don't have something nice to say, nobody likes a snarky comment. Look at it, maybe you learn something. Chime in if you like. If you really want to answer a question, send one of these personal messages to somebody. Don't try to put them down socially and in a public manner. It's not cool, and you want to be cool. I know everybody does. Remember, courtesy is contagious, and there's nothing like turning that frown upside down. Until next week, I bid you all peace and tight lines. Let's check it with Brendan Wittigliano of Captree Bait and Tackle. Thanks, Matt. Just wanted to welcome all the kids back to their first day of school. And I uh, tell you guys about a crazy week we had, starting with Matt and Ryan catching sheep's head and a giant black drum. It was all over social media. Thanks for weighing in, guys. And then ending today with a 12 and a quarter pound fluke caught by Bruce aboard the Capture Princess. Uh, plenty of fish around. There's tons of uh, bluefish, blowfish, kingfish, snappers, uh, cobia, and fluke. The fluke, there's a lot of big fish out there, but you do have to pick through the small ones, so just be aware of that. Uh, the amount of anglers on the water has diminished since the kids are back to school, which makes it a lot easier for guys like me to go out there during the week and really catch some fish without having to worry about, you know, 300 boats around. 
uh, get out there, have some fun. Um, the, the shops are both open. Captree's open daily 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. And Jones Beach is open daily 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. So get out there, go have some fun, bring me some fish to weigh and take some pictures of, and uh, maybe you could be on the report. From the Far Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Barnzetti. Hey Matt, uh, Fire Island report for this week. Uh, fishing's a little bit on the tough side. We got a little bit of a brown tide working, but uh, if you work a little bit to the, you know, get back to the east in the back bay, the water's cleaner. There's some fish around. I had bluefish and weak fish today. Uh, fishing peanut bunker, and I mean, there's something to be caught offshore. There's still yellowfin around the Bacardi area. So there's some offshore fishing as well. Let's just hope this hurricane is gonna stay way to the east and go up the Atlantic and leave us alone. So that'll be next week. But this weekend, the weather looks pretty decent. So it's a matter of just getting out there and working a little bit, looking for some clean water and get on the fish. But, uh, and bottom fishing is also excellent right now. So that's about it for this week, Matt. We'll talk to you next week, keep you posted. With our fly and freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Well, hello, Matt. Well, let me tell you, I got a chance out here. This is Tuesday. Went out with my good friend Kenny, and uh, well, we had a good day. No fish, but we had a good day. It's always good to get out. But man, it is hot. I feel for my wife who's working today with no air conditioning. Um, but anyway, uh, so last night, though, my wife, my son, his girlfriend, myself, we all went down to uh, Island Park, uh, I'm sorry, East Rockaway, uh, to one of the parks there, and did a little snapper fishing. It was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. But here's the funny thing is, I caught snappers, but I also caught the smallest striper I've ever caught. Uh, my son caught some Jack Cavells. Uh, my wife, she caught, uh, she also caught a Jack uh, and a bunch of snappers. And uh, Owen's girlfriend, she had a Spanish mackerel all in the back bays. Hey, it's a lot of fun. We had a good time. Take your kids. The bays are loaded with these snappers right now. This is the time. Get your kids out there. As far as freshwater goes, I guided Ed last uh, week and on uh, the Cadet Quad, and it was um, it was good. Uh, he, he never fished before, never fly fished before. He's a surf guy. Uh, so he had some, uh, some good fish and uh, he had some on. He did land one and we went to take a picture and it jumped off out of his hands. So we got the release. <laughs> but we had a good time anyway. And he was really, I think he's hooked. He's asking me, you know, to, he bought an outfit so he's all set to go. He's gonna fish the connect quite. Great place to learn great place to learn so until next week get out there stay or stay in the air conditioning and tie lines everybody captain mike sentry is the latest from staten island so we headed out on sunday and this trip unfortunately we were sharked it was pretty much nothing but huge dusky sharks and a couple black tips the water temperature rose substantially uh, 74 75 degrees the previous years from 2019 all the way up to 2022 our water temperature was around 70.5 degrees we're reading 75 76 degrees so that has a lot to do with the invasion of these sharks and what's happening in Florida with the water temperatures being so high with that said the Boston bluefin tuna classic some very impressive size bluefin have been caught I think the biggest one so far is uh, 788 pounds and that was caught by the boat named uh, Ruthless. So he's currently standing at number one. They're chasing uh, live bluefish up there. They're using mackerel, bluefish, pretty much anything you put in the water, right by Plum Island in Massachusetts, by um, not New York or Long Island, Plum Island, Massachusetts. That's where they're pretty much catching all these giants right now, really close to shore. So with that said, let me get out of here. Currently working on a guy's boat back here. Uh, typical old fashioned Mercury, gotta love him. But with that said, well, hopefully the weather cools down and uh, get back out there. So enjoy uh, what's left of summer, guys. Back to you.
If you stuck around into the report this one, we have something different for you. A review of the Blue Island Oyster Company's Lobster Roll from the Seafood Festival a few weeks back by yours truly. Hey, what's up everyone? We're at the Long Island Maritime Museum here in West Sayville. It's the 2023 Seafood Fest. We got live music, we got a ton of vendors. We're gonna go around to talk to some people. I'm gonna try some seafood because I love that. If you like boating, fishing, anything nautical, and you're on Long Island, this is the place to be today. Let's go check it out. The Seafood Festival, it ain't a festival unless you mix seafood. I came here for one thing, one thing only. The lobster roll. When I get a good lobster roll, it has to have a supple amount of meat in it. Blue Island? Is that what it is? Blue Island. Supple amount of meat in here. Cold roll, we got the mayo going on here. I squeeze a little lemon on top, toasted with butter. One bite only, everybody knows the rules on the lobster roll. Here we go. Honest review. Excellent lobster roll, 9 5. Get a 9.5 on that. Uh, the texture. Texture's good. I can taste it. The buttered roll, toasted. Excellent water roll. 9.5. That's the review. Don't forget to get some fishing in this weekend. It is that time of year where everything starts to change and we should see a really good spark in the action. We will see you right here next week on the Fishwinds Weekly Video Fishing Forecast.